that you do not understand white supremacy, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you do understand will confuse you. In all of these nine areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, anywhere on the planet, minute by minute, day by day, all of the time, all of the time. Good morning and welcome to the June the 15th edition of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby. For those new to the show, we have a contact number and it is 516-453-9921. When you dial that number and you want to have a conversation with Mr. Fuller or a VGQ, a little saying, then all you need to do is press the number one button. And when you do that, you will get in line and give the call screen of your name so that I can properly introduce you and get to your question. And I would ask, ma'am, and I would ask, sir, please, please, Make your questions short, concise, to the point, so that Mr. Fuller can understand it and answer it appropriately. That would be very, very nice. If you decide to write me to have your question read by going to my Gmail account, it is at number 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. And I would please ask, ma'am, please, sir, to... Do the same. Do not write me a novel because it will not be read. It has to be so that it can be for radio. And if you ask all, all this and go through all this, uh, trying to get you know it, it across, it just simply we don't have enough time to do that because we're only on a two-hour limit. So please, ma'am, please, sir, I'm asking you. Please don't take advantage of of me or the time. Just ask the question, and so that Mr. Fuller can answer the question. The chat room is open, and um, sometimes uh, your questions can uh, might be addressed in there. Everybody has a chance to do that as Sankofa777 is in there, Be Good 1 is in there. Um, but uh, make sure, if you want to, you can get on that and develop a chat on there. You can do that. Okay, I think that might be it. So let's let's start off the show this way. Good morning, Mr. Fuller, and how are you this morning? Good morning. I'm still learning. Okay. Let's start off with a VGQ. Who is this from? I believe it's from Black Rent. Anyway, Black Rent on the VGQ says this. this. Too many of us are always in reactionary mode of emotion when dealing with racism instead of looking at it for what it is, projected self-hatred. Whites cannot deal with their own self-hatred from not having melanin, so they project it onto us and make us hate ourselves instead. We know for a fact that most whites are extremely dumb, stupid, and lazy people, which is why the Slavs made terrible slaves. Whites steal all of our ideas, patent them, and then pretend they invented them. Then they teach those lies to our children. There is no way such an idiotic people could have conquered black genius unless they had help from supernatural being. Not God, but someone with great power who does not like us for some reason. I look around each day and... All I see is nothing but whites pretending to be us all day, every day, like the movie Trading Places. Once we get assimilated to the mindset we have destroyed our own selves, esteem, and become their permanent mind slaves, it may not seem like it on the surface, but they need us, and we don't need them. We just believe we do. And we are wrong. Still learning. 
from Black Rant. Okay, that was a VGQ. And we'll have others going in here. But let's go to the phone lines right now. And let's go to Toussaint in Brooklyn. Let me see if I can cue you in. Okay, go ahead, Toussaint. Good morning, and you can be heard. What is your question for Mr. Fuller? Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, uh, sir. My question is good morning, good morning. Uh my question uh this morning is how do we separate the fact that white people are less threatened by queer black men versus masculine black men? Uh say that again. I didn't quite catch that. I'm sorry. Uh, how do we separate the fact that white people are less threatened by uh, gay black men or queer black men versus masculine black men? Oh, well, it has to do with, if I understand the question, uh, the black male has always been more threatening than the black female. Or, or when it comes to blackness, so threatening how? Because the black male is most likely to produce non-white females and in a more aggressive uh, way. The black male more than the black female. The black female is more or less sub- submissive in a sexual encounter. Whereas the black male is, he's he moves more forward. You might use that word, and so he's more of a threat to white genetic survival. And this should be addressed, by the way, uh, in any discussion. I mean, it should be the first thing that's taken that, that's taken into consideration. If you're talking about so-called integrated schools or whatever, the first thing that should be discussed is what is going to be the interaction between white people and black people sexually. Sex is extremely powerful. So that's the one thing that everybody dances around. That should be the first thing that's discussed. If you're going to sit down and negotiate and whatnot, let's get that sex thing out of the way right quick before we move on to the money and the housing and all that. Let's let's get it straight about, you know, who's going to do what sexually and let everybody get an understanding about that because there's no point in going forward in anything else without dealing with it. And how many times have you seen that actually happen? Almost zero. Why? Because it's almost like it's forbidden, like sex doesn't exist. When you start talking about race and sex, everybody talks about it in those separate groups and all like that. When it comes to the other areas of activity, sex is the eighth area according to the code, and you have the area of economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, then sex, then war. But we'll discuss everything except except how is it going to look in this school or in this factory or in this whatever it is going to be, in this neighborhood, in this church. Why is it that black people and white people having the same religion don't go to the same churches here in 2021? And a lot of people say, well, we got a different style of worship because black people do a lot of, you know, we got a lot of soul and a lot of, you know, we, we, we got to get down with it. And white people are too stiff. So we got our own style. No, that's not just it. In churches, People are likely to intermingle, visit each other when they're sick and all like that, church members. And they get to know each other on a handshake basis and on a hugging basis, you might say. And that means that sex 
gets involved. So in answer to the question, the black male is always deadly. So if you can effeminize that black male and then masculinize the black female, that's an ideal situation to perpetuate the system of white supremacy, which is what they are doing now all over the world. The white supremacist said, hey, bring me an effeminate black male. I don't care if he's got great big shoulders and whatnot, strong, super intelligent, knows more than anybody, smarter than a whole bunch of white people, but emasculate him. Don't bring that Negro in here with his full regalia, and, and he wants to be a male. He's a male, and he wants to be a male, continue to be a male, forever be a male, never be mixed up about anything else, and a full male who is attracted to females, heaven forbid. Don't bring that creature in here. He's devastating to the system of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. Bring bring in an effeminate black person, one that comes in here skipping with some little gold slippers on and whatnot, and, you know, and eyelashes, the whole nine yards, and wants to do a, you know, a little dance for us and whatnot. Show us how wonderful he can dance and whirl around and and, uh, as effeminate as he can be. And he can write his own check. <laughs> he can get mm-hmm. anything he wants to. Mm-hmm. He's no okay. threat to the system of white supremacy, no kind of way. All righty. Thank you, Toussaint, for your question, and do not be a uh, stranger. Okay, let's see here. This comes from Alex. He says this, Mr. Fuller. He says, Mr. Fuller, what is, what is your belief? Do you believe what the scientists say or what the Bible says on how everything was created. What's the most logical explanation of the two? How the Bible says everything was created? Let me see. Let me read it again. Mr. Fuller, what's your belief? Do you believe what the scientists say or what the Bible says on how everything was created? What's the most logical explanation of the two? Oh, I don't know. There's so many different viewpoints. So you just pick one and go with it. But it's one thing for sure. We are here. Trees are here. Birds are here. Flowers are here. Food is here. Cicadas are here. Hmm. So they, I mean, we we have evidence that things are here. When I I wake up in the morning, I know that I'm here, whatever here means. And I know I didn't have anything to do with it and don't know nothing about it except what I've heard. I know zero about me being here, what I'm here for except what I've heard since I've been here. And I've heard all kinds of things. I've heard that I was created to do this and created to do that. And then somebody from the back of the room stands up and says, oh, that's not the reason you're here. Nowhere close to that. And they'll give another opinion. And then somebody else will say something else. So the answer is, I don't know. But I think that I'm here in the year 2021, my assignment is to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. That's the best I've come up with in all the years I've been on the planet. Why? Because I say it's the biggest impediment, the biggest obstacle to the production of how the world should be. We're in a universe, I have heard. I buy into that. And that we should be universal people, interacting with each other in the most constructive manner. Since we're here in the form of people, that's that's, that's the conclusion I came to. Mm -hmm. And I've locked on to it until somebody showed 
me that we're here for some other purpose. I want to know what it is. Oh, okay. 516-453-9921 is the number that you would call if you would like to get uh, in contact with Mr. Fuller and ask a question. I would ask, please, ma'am, please, sir, to give your name to the call screener. Uh, I'm looking at my screen now, and this person in the 562 area has not given their name, so I don't know who that is, but please do that. You can also uh, gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y, at gmail.com. You can do that, and the chat room is open. You can join the people there. Okay, let's go to the Bronx, and we're going to have uh, George. Let's see here. Okay, George, we have you in. Good morning, and what is your question for Mr. Fuller? Hey, Bobby, good morning, and good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Um, yes, uh, my question has to do with a, an article that I read. It was written by a psychoanalyst and, in my opinion, a suspected white supremacist by the name of Donald Moss. And this article was published in medical journals on the topic of whiteness. Now, I'm going to just going to re, uh, read a few of the points of the article very briefly, and I want to know Mr. Fuller's opinion. Mr. Moss said, whiteness is a malignant, parasitic-like condition to which white people have a particular susceptibility. It is the, con- this condition is foundational, generating characteristic ways of being in one's body, in one's mind, and in one's world. Parasitic whiteness renders its host appetites voracious, insatiable, and perverse. It has a particular, uh, it particularly targets non-white peoples, and once established, these appetites are nearly impossible to eliminate. While effective treatment consists of a combination of psychic and social historical interventions, there is no guarantee against regression back to whiteness. So there's no permanent cure, he's saying. I want to know Mr. Uh, Fuller's opinion on this, and does this accurately reflect the mentality and condition of, a, of, of being a white supremacist? It could be. Mr. Fuller? Mm-hmm. Yes, it could be, and then it might not be. So it comes down to, according to what uh, I say and what I've written in the code book, and the reason for the code book is, Everybody uh, on the planet is nowhere near the quality of person. That's the way I look at it, that a person should be, and all the evidence shows that. There's no people on the planet who are conducting themselves, regardless of what the reasons are, in the way that people should conduct themselves. There's no record of it ever happening. That I know of, it's nothing, nothing. You know, it's always been people in conflict with each other, even when they are isolated from other people. They get in conflict, even if just one person in conflict with another person. Conflict has been here. So, the prescription for all of this is say, regardless of the reasons, and regardless of how somebody started out or what their uh, different metabolism might be. We need a world in which people interact with each other to produce one thing, a constructive result in every move that they make. And that's what we should work for or work toward. we We can come up with thousands of reasons why people do the things that they do that shouldn't be done. And and everybody on the planet is always doing something that shouldn't be done. Everybody has great flaws without exception. I don't care who it is. We're loaded with poison, loaded with flaws. There are no what you call perfect people that I've ever heard of. And, uh, Certainly, if it has been some in the past, they certainly don't exist now. Mm-hmm. That has come to my attention. So what it comes down to is, hey, let's all get on a page where we produce constructive results, okay? That's it. 
no excuses, no half-stepping, and say, well, my background or my metabolism or the way that I'm made, it just won't allow me to do it. Hey, 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 constructive results. Okay, what you say? We're going to get constructive results, period. That's it. Nothing non-constructive. And everybody on the planet here in 2021 should be on that page right now as of this minute. Because there's just too much foolishness going on. Everybody's mm-hmm. standing around making speeches that go on and on and on, and absolutely nothing changes. It's fundamental. That's what counter racist codification is supposed to be about. Mm-hmm. All right. George from the Bronx, thank you so much for your call. Don't be a stranger. Let me say hello or grand rising Armani to San A San Nicofa. Let's get on code and uh Emery Lumumba. I think he's in a foreign country there, Emery, but thank you. They're all in the chat room. So we thank you um for uh, for listening and your chats and so forth. Let's go out to um let's go down south to Georgia and we have Raymond. Raymond, uh, Raymond? Hello? Yes, sir. Morning. Yeah, got you, got you on. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I just need Mr. Fuller to elaborate on, on the back of book, book where he said about the order. As long as racism exists, anything said or done by people that is not intended to help eliminate racism and to help produce justice is a waste of time and energy. What I have a VGQ to add to that where people might say, but I'm just trying to get by. So I'm um, like, please elaborate on why, why would the author say that, please. Thank you. I'm still listening. I'm still learning. Okay, Mr. Fuller, did you understand that? Uh, I didn't quite get the question because he made some statements in there, too. Okay, uh, Raymond, uh, you, if you're still there, Raymond, could you repeat that yes. and a little slowly so that, Mr. Fuller can, so that Mr. Fuller can yes. hear it? No, it was about the author at the back of both books. He said, Mr. Fuller, the author said, as long as racism exists, Anything said or done by people that is not in to help them and to help produce justice is a waste of time and energy. But I'm just adding a VGQ that would say that a lot of people might say, I'm just trying to get by, just trying to, I mean, how am I wasting time and energy? So please, could you el- more elaborate and more explain it more better for me, please? Thank you. I'm still listening. Okay, Mr. Fuller, if you understand it, could did you uh, could you respond to that? I think I understand what was being said. Okay, give uh, it a shot. But uh, on the back of the book, uh, next to the last paragraph, it says, as long as racism exists, anything said or done by people that is not intended to help eliminate racism and to help to produce justice is a waste of time and energy. And if I understand the question, uh, would I elaborate on that? Yes, I can. Anything that it, literally, it, that's exactly what it means. If, uh, the race problem is the biggest problem on the planet. So if you're not doing anything to solve the race problem, you're not really solving whatever problem you think you have. That's the theory. That's the approach. Now, it could be an error. People can question that. People can say, oh, no, <laughs> if we have a race problem, is way down the list. If we do this and do that and do the other, the race problem would be easier to solve. In fact, the race problem would be solved. The position I've taken is you better handle that race problem first. Whatever you think you're handling in any area of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, or war, whatever you think is a priority that comes before solving the race problem, that's incorrect thinking because you are not going to solve any of those problems. I don't care what they are. If you're a person of color, 
without solving the race problem. That race problem is going to trip up everything that you are going to do or think you are going to do or plan to do sometimes in the near future or the far future. Why? Because it's the most important, most powerful of all problems that covers all of the areas of activity for the non-white people of this planet. That is the theory. You can't solve any major problem without solving the race problem first or in the process of solving whatever other problem you might have. Somewhere right now, somebody's looking at a clipboard maybe and, and thinking about, well, uh, i got to calculate this, uh, what I've got to do about this shipping these goods uh, somewhere. All right? And uh, you say, but, but i got a problem, I mean, you know, dealing with uh, the cost of shipping. I'm just throwing out an example here. Uh, well... Why is it you got a problem dealing with the cost of shipping? Why hasn't that problem been solved? Well, you just keep digging. You're going to run into some element where the race factor came into the problem of you getting your product from one place to another. And you say, I thought I just had a shipping problem. I didn't think I had a race problem. Yeah, you got a race problem. If you're a person of color, you always got a race problem whether you know it or not. You always got a race problem. There's no such thing as you not having one. Because the white supremacists make sure that you have one. Because that's their business. That's their success story. I hope I answered the question. All righty. Okay. Thank you, uh, Raymond. And uh, thank you for listening. Don't be a stranger here. Let me take a little break here. You are listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr., also referred to as the CRCS. Now, if you have a question, just dial this number, 516-453-9921, and make sure that you press the number one button so that you can get in line that Mr. Fuller may address your question for your VGQ. And I would ask, ma'am, sir, please, please do not write or, or be, be long with it be, because it just interferes with the allotted time that we have here. So so don't do that. Be, be mindful of that. Just be quick. Even if you have to write your question down to say it, uh, you know, do that, but just be quick so we can keep the show and the flow of the show moving. Could you do that, please, ma'am, please, sir? Also, if you'd like for me to read it, you can Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B O B B Y, at gmail.com. Now, I have to admit that uh, if you do that, your question will not necessarily be read today, but at some point in time, I will address it, and I will inform you of the date and time that the question uh, has been read, and you can get the response that Mr. Fuller may have uh, to your question, so you can do that. So let's try to keep it together, and when you do call, please, uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, like this person in the 314 has just got on my board, give your name so that... Um, I can uh, properly introduce you. Okay, enough with that here. This comes from, uh, let me see if I can get this right, Arukuel. Arukuel. It says, uh, greetings, uh, listeners, hosts, and service providers. In reference to page 238 of the Codified Word Guide, mistake, page 238, an analysis, there is no comp no comp compensatory definition for mistake and no mention of the word miracle concept miracles or mistakes have the same meaning the evidence that logic was questioned by those who were created by the creator to solve problems a code 
the only difference between miracle or miracles, mistake or mistakes, is the constructive result of or the lack of constructive result of the logic. The question based on this thought and and speech and action is, does this compute, Mr. Fuller, mistakes are non-constructive results of action in question, miracles are constructive results of actions and questions. We all make and exist in mistakes, and we all make and exist in miracles. We do not all agree which is which, but the evidence shows the constructive results and non-constructive results of both when considered. Thank you for your consideration to my analysis. Mr. Fuller? Uh, that's valid if it works. That's what codification is all about. Does it work? Does it work for you or for other people as you explain it that way too? Now, when I say work, that's kind of abstract, but you got those two words again, constructive result. So if that analysis produces constructive results, that's it. Words are nothing but tools, regardless of what kind of definition you give to them. So when you give a definition to a word, and then you put that into practice, into action, you use that definition, and it works to produce a constructive result, it's always valid. Words are nothing, you know, they're just tools. They're just stuff that's floating around, just raw material. Every word is nothing but just raw material. You can take it and do what with it you want to. Words are not just something that's just kind of out there. They're words for getting something done. Uh, I mean, they exist, rather, for getting things done. They exist. With somebody thought up an idea of, well, we have languages, and languages are made up of words. Well, what are languages and words for? What do they do? To get things done. What kind of things? Anything that you want to do. You're going to do something, and the words will help. And what you want to do, that's the first thing you make up your mind to. What is it you're trying to do? And then you find the words that will help you to do what is it you're trying to do. You say, well, what if these words don't exist? Then bring them into existence. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And attach whatever definitions you think will work, just like a toolbox. When you see a box or two, somebody came up with some idea that you need a screwdriver for this, and you need pliers for that, you need a hammer for that. Words are no different. They're Mm. just tools to get something done. Okay. All righty. All right, hang in there, Willie from Charlotte, Lightning from Lynette, Alabama. But right now, and whoever's in the 682, don't forget to give your name so I can properly introduce you. But I'll tell you what, I am going to introduce this gentleman right here in the 562, Marcus. Hey, brother, you are on with Mr. Fuller. You can be heard, and what is your question? Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. I'm still Good morning, learning. sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, uh, my question for this morning is, out over in Maryland, a young teenager was uh, using an electronic cigarette, uh, what they call vapes, um, on the boardwalk. And um, I guess in the video it showed that the officers told him to put his hands up, which he did, and you can tell that the, the young man was frightened. And, you know, they tased him. And then there's more and more outcry again, as it should be, from what I understand. But more people, to me, seem to um, are becoming, I wouldn't say confused, but, like, shocked that that this is still going on. So... I guess could you explain to those who are either new to the new to the show, new to listening to you, hearing hearing you talk, that when we come encounter with these suspected race soldiers that 
we should expect this to happen to us no matter what the case is under the current system that we have. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In answer to that, yes, sir. You just said it yourself. You just said it to the world yourself. You should expect it. You should expect out of nowhere someone to come up and hit you in the back of the head and knock you flat. Why? Because you're black, that's why. And I'm talking about people with authority, meaning the white supremacists, the race soldiers. You should expect that out of nowhere, anytime, any place, and say, what are you going to do about it, Negro? Who do you know that can come to your rescue? Because I got plenty of people to back me up. That's why I did it. And as long as you have the system of white supremacy, you're going to have that. Why? Because you're in a prison camp. That's why. See, the whole world is a prison camp, a concentration camp, not just an ordinary camp. It's like the camps like you see in the movies during wartime. People shuffling along. And when they don't move fast enough, a guard comes up and shoots them in the head. Or if they happen to fall down from exhaustion, someone comes up and turns you over and sees that you can't walk no more, and you're on a what they call a death march, they shoot you in the head. They don't have time to fool around with you. You know, get you back on your feet and explain things to you and all that. You're black in a system of white supremacy. And if you're a black male particularly, and a growing number of black females who are becoming more and more masculine and aggressive, they're going to get the same thing, okay? So you always expect this. And until that's why get rid of the system of white supremacy and it doesn't do harm to you. You're supposed to be harmed. You're like that paratrooper in the uh, TV series called Band of Brothers when one lieutenant came up to another and said, Lieutenant, you better get your men out of here because the enemy has broken through up there and they're coming with tanks and guns. They're coming with everything that you can name. And you've got nobody to back you up. And in a few hours, you're going to be surrounded if you don't get out of here. And the other lieutenant looked at him and said, we're paratroopers. We're supposed to be surrounded. Hmm. That's the way every black person should look at their entire existence on this planet in the system of racism. Mm -hmm. You're black. You're supposed to be mistreated. What are you talking about? They mistreated me up there. What do you mean? You're born to be mistreated. Where do you think you are? Where do you think you are? You're in a concentration camp, a world concentration camp, called the system of white supremacy. That's what it is. All righty. Couldn't have said it better. Thank you so much, and Marcus, Marcus, for your call. And you know, uh, you don't have to be a stranger. All righty. Let's go down to Charlotte, and we're getting ready to speak to Willie. Willie, you are on with Mr. Fuller. You can be heard, and what is your question? Good morning, Mr. Bobby. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, sir. I, Good morning. The, uh, so the code helps us to organize our behavior individually to fight against white supremacy. My question is, how is it, that white people seem to operate as if they were, their behavior is codified and they're acting as if all their behaviors are synchronized over centuries and I don't see a code for them. How is it that they, how do we see the code that they're operating under, whether they're conservative or liberal are old, are young, especially young, all their behaviors are synchronized in a white supremacist way, how do we see the code that they're operating under? They're operating under a code 
without a code. I, I don't understand that. Uh, can can you can you uh, elaborate on that? Nothing works efficiently without a code. So they have a code. That's why I wrote the textbook for victims of white supremacy. I think I did my best to explain what their code is. And even here on the air this morning, I said, that's their code. The white supremacists want to dominate and have succeeded in doing so and mistreat people who they classify as non-white. And they came up with a code that covers all of the areas of activity for doing so. And we are looking right at their code every day. Mm -hmm. That's why we're having this conversation right now. Now, the question is, where is their code? You're looking right at it. You don't do anything without them telling you what to do if you're a person of color. You can't go anywhere or do anything. We'd be talking about the field of economics because there are areas of activity for the people of the planet. So if you're a person of color, who controls your economics? Economics meaning time and energy. Black people love to talk about money because we have so little of it. Man, I got to get me some bread. I got to get me some Benjamins. You got to get you some Benjamins? Yeah, a lot of them meaning Benjamin Franklin, a white man, all right? Mm. You know, that's what you want. You want in your pocket. I mean, I, somebody show you some pictures of some money that's got some black people on it, you say, I don't want that mess. It's, it's in their face. <laughs> now, so-called money with a white person's picture on it, now we're getting somewhere. Now you're talking about something of value. Now I can buy something. That, that that junk that you're showing me, I mean, got some black dude on it. I mean, you know, I don't even know what that is. Everything, economics, education. People are getting in boats right now as we speak. It's right in your face. And they say, why are you getting on those boats? Those old razor get boats. You, you think you're going to get across an ocean? And that thing, with all those people on there, some of them hanging on the sides, and you go run in the storms, where do you think you're going like that? All you black people, some of you got babies in your arms. Well, we got to get out of here. Well, get out of here going where? You going to Utopia? You going to the moon? We going whichever the white folks went. It's right in your face every day, everywhere you look. Where is the white code? <laughs> you don't exist without it. Sitting there eating cereal and whatnot. I mean, who pitches on the box? I mean, uh, or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, everything you do, every move you make, got to go get my car fixed. Got to <laughs> go make my car payment. Every move you make. Well, I'm going to church. Well, who let you build that church? <laughs> yeah, they're talking about, you know, they they gentrifying now, so they, they didn't make us move to church, but uh, now uh, they, the parking regulations, uh, can't nobody come to my church no more. See, a lot of preachers know about that, you know. Say, we used to have a lot of parking around here, and now we don't have no parking around here at all. Now my congregation can't come to church because it's mostly people who, you know, some of them are senior citizens and whatnot, have been a member of my church forever. Now I can't, they can't come to church. So what happens? That church gets boarded up. So the good reverend got to start all over again. He got to say, where did my con? I got to go and find my congregation because. With this gentrification that came in, it's way out in the boondocks now. So I got to get me a church out there because I can't stay here because it ain't no parking. See, they didn't make you move. They didn't come and tell you you got to move. What they did was change the parking regulations all around where your congregation usually parked. 
It's when everybody starts getting those two hundred dollar tickets, they start coming. Hmm. All righty, Willie. Thank you so much for your question. And uh, since I think you are a first timer, you may not be, but don't be a stranger. Before we go to this one, Mr. Fuller, Black Tony says this. He says that Fuller has answered every question that you can have on this program and the other programs because you have to understand that you are in the system of white supremacy, racism. If you do not understand that, then everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Way to go, Black Tony. <laughs> Mr. Fuller, this is the time since we you've been talking all about this uh, ever since we started this program today, as you do every week. You have written a publication, a book, a code book for us to operate on in this system of white supremacy racism. I would like for you for the next few moments to talk about your book. Yes. People have been calling and, you know, and, and asking me questions. They're right there in the book. What do you do about racism? Oh, you know, the white supremacists got a code. Uh, do we need one? Yes, we need one. That's why I'm trying to write one. And uh, I always like to interject this. People ask me, Fuller, where's the whole code? So you got a couple of volumes here. Is that the whole code? And my answer is, there's no such thing as a whole code. Until what? Until all problems are solved. So codification is something you keep inventing every minute of every day where there's a problem. Because that's what a code is supposed to do, eliminate problems. If it's designed to do that. Now, the white supremacist code is to make a problem for the non-white people that only the white supremacists can solve. And they have produced a code that will do that. So a counter-racist code is what we need so that we can replace this evil system called the system of white supremacy with a better code a better way of doing things, which is what all the code really is, the best way of doing things, by producing universal man and universal woman who will do everything that is of constructive value in the known universe, which is what we should have had in the first place. But you got to get rid of this thing called white supremacy in order to do it. Why? Because that's the most powerful obstacle, the most powerful thing in the way along the route of anybody who wants a peaceful world. You're not going to have one as long as you have racism. Mm -hmm. You have to eliminate that. And so I've written a book called The Textbook for Victims of White Supremacy, which is what racism is. There's no other form. And how to go about as an individual person in your daily things that you do in each area of activity, how to say things, how to not say things, how to do things, and the things to do and the things not to do that will bring that about. And it's got to be many, many millions of individual persons doing these things according to a code because everything that works has a code to it. The white supremacist system works. So that's what I've tried to do with the textbook for victims of white supremacy that you can get by going to ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com. All righty. Thank you so much, Mr. Fuller. Um, before I go to Lightning, Lightning, I'm going to get to you. Um, uh, this lady, I'm, gonna give, I'm not going to give her a name, uh, but she said that she um, – Applied was going to apply applying for this job, and under under race, she put um, she put victim victim of um, white supremacy race, and she told the 
person or whoever that the the, the category wasn't on there. Do you think that she was uh, incorrect for saying that, Mr. Fuller? No. If that's what she is, she can identify herself like she wants to and explain it to anybody who asks. That's a category. That comes under BGQ. You can use any kind of name or title you want to use to describe yourself as long as you're telling the truth. See, when people, when you're applying for a job, now whether or not you get the job, that's a different story, whether that's the best move to make or not. Mm -hmm. All right? But I did it uh, not the first time I applied for the job because I didn't think it would work. It would take too much explaining Okay, and they're probably looking for a way not to hire me, no way. So, <laughs> yeah. See, so you got to think about that. Constructive results. Always think about what the results going to be. But after that, I would identify myself as VOR, victim of racism. Nobody questioned it. Okay. When I'd okay. make out a document, I put sometimes I put down black slash VOR. Take your choice. I'm black, and I'm a victim of racism. And if anybody okay. asked me, what's this VOR? Nobody never did. But if anybody would have asked, I would have explained it. Oh, I'm a victim of racism. I'm black, but I'm a victim of racism also. <laughs> Boy, that's, and that's then, good. You know, and, then, and then wait for their comment. Mm-hmm. Uh, or wait for a further explanation, whatever they ask. I'm applying for the job. I want the job. I'm in the prison camp called the System of White Supremacy, and I'm just applying for a job in that system. End of story. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Let's go to the 334. We got lightning in the house. Lightning, you're on with Mr. Fuller. Good morning, Mr. Bobby, Mr. Fuller. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, we are learning today. Uh, I uh, have a VGQ and a question. Uh, my VGQ is the one thing that will save humanity is the one thing that I think is a stumbling block for our code, and that is the uh, area of activity called religion. Unless we all have one religion, because religion is based on your faith and your belief, and we all have our own faith and belief. I think that's one of the major stumbling blocks in developing the code. But as an individual, we can do our own thing. Uh, my question is, I uh, I didn't get on to ask your permission, Mr. Fuller, but I uh, printed out me my own T-shirt, not for sale, just for my own individual uh, preference. Uh, the uh, statement that you made that I think one of the greatest statements of all time, if you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, racism, white supremacy, what it is, and how it works, everything else you understand will only confuse you. And I was wearing those shirts, and I, uh, for me, I thought it would be constructed to uh, invite conversation on the matter, although I think it, uh, well, I know it does, it makes my wife uncomfortable uh, whenever I do it. So my question to you, Mr. Fuller, uh, uh, do you think that's a constructed thing to do? Uh, uh, well, for, well, I wanted to ask this. Are you okay with uh, me doing that? I didn't get a chance to get in and ask your permission. No, well, that's, that, that is another matter, because that might come, to, come under the copyright thing. Uh Right. Uh, I'll use your so, name so as, somebody uh, else. for the quote. Oh, you did on the T-shirt? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. Well, uh, no, I, I couldn't pass judgment on that because I got somebody that handles all my legal matters, but it is what it is. But So that's all I can say. I mean, you, you're uh-huh. saying that you did that and that you're doing that, so there's nothing I can say about it right now because I don't know enough about it. Uh, so somebody who handles my legal matters will handle that. But uh, yeah. I will say this about 
uh, what effect that might have. The effect that might have is whom is going to see it and what's going to be their reaction. And so here again, the one thing that the entire code is about and the one thing message that every black person on the planet should have swimming in their heads at all times is just those two words, constructive results. See, when you go to a meeting or anything like that, you just say, hey, 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 everybody's doing all this talking. What's the constructive result? I mean, now, everything that we're talking about, what's going to be the constructive result after we do and say everything that we're going to do and say? I mean, let's get that straight right now before we start doing anything, before the meeting opens. What's going to be the constructive result? So that we know what we're doing. Otherwise, why be here? Constructive result. And that's it. And that's true of what you put on a T-shirt or a sign that you carry or what you put on an application for a job. What's going to be the constructive result? Always have that in mind when you make any kind of move. Somewhere right now, somebody's putting a 9 millimeter pistol or two in their waistband might have one strapped around their leg, down near the ankle, you know. Oh, yeah, we, we, we come up with ways, all right, of doing what we do, okay, that's going to produce results for us, okay. But then you stop and think now, okay, what are you going to do? you got three guns on you, all right. Well, I'm going down here and knock off, knock off this. Uh, delicatessen, uh, I'm going three blocks further and uh, see if I can carjack me somebody. Okay, that's what you're going to do? That's your plan for the day? You know, that's your business that you're in? That's the business you have chosen, as they say in the movie The Godfather? Okay, how long do you think you're going to be in that kind of business before something bad happens to you? Okay. What's your right. longevity business plan? Constructive results. You know, even homeboy who's getting ready to rob somebody, he's looking for constructive results. Is he going to get it? Going about it that way? See, that's all the only thing you have to keep in mind. Hey, constructive results. So if you got a t shirt to say something, it's all about when white people see it. What are they going to say? Am I going to go and apply for a job with this and get the kind of results that I want? And that uh, steely-eyed white woman is sitting there looking at me and looking at that T-shirt saying, if you don't understand white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else that you understand will confuse you, will only confuse you. Neely Fuller Jr., and you want to work in here wearing that (laughs) T-shirt? Is that the result that you're looking for? Well, Mm. uh, if she says, oh, that's just what we're looking for, people like you, people who I can see right now where your thinking is. (laughs) So we, we need more people like you working in here. Uh, well, that may not be the that may not be the result you look. You know, that's the result you're looking for, but that might not be the result you're going to get. Yeah, unfortunately, we got to leave it there because we're out of time on the first hour. So thank you, Lightning. Don't be a don't be a stranger there. And for those of you who have to go, thank you for listening to the first hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mister Neely Fuller. But we have a second hour that um, we will get into at the same number and uh, we're going to close this one out in about uh, 10 seconds we'll start the next show thank you for listening all righty 
welcome to the second hour of the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. I am your co host, Mr. Bobby. Now we have a contact number that you can contact the show. And that number is 516-453-9921. And when you contact that number, if you have a question or a short comment, please make it short, capital letters short. Please, ma'am, please, sir, you yeah, keep, keep it short. Just depress or, excuse me, press the number one button and you will get in line with those who also want to make a um a question or a contribution to the sh- to the show. You can also uh, Gmail me at the numeral number seven, Mr. Bobby B O B B Y at Gmail dot com. And I don't think that we will read those today. The ones that we are reading are those that we have stacked up, and we have quite a few stacked up, and we try to get to them as quickly as we can. But the main point is we let Mr. Fuller answer your questions when you call in. So that really is the best way to uh, to do it. But if you can't get in, just email me, and we will um, get to your question eventually, and I will give you the date and the time when I read your Gmail so it won't go un- unnoticed for the most part, for the most part. Okay. Uh, let's see here, Mr. Fuller. Uh, let's do this here. This comes from Adam. He says this, Mr. Fuller, from the Gmail. says this, Mr. Fuller, if the courts were to drop charges against non-whites except for murder and pedophilia, is that ending systematic racism? And if not, please explain. I don't know. See, it's a lot of things that you don't know what's going to happen until it happens. So if that's what somebody's doing, they're doing it for a reason. So you see if that produces what? A constructive result. You turn a whole lot of black people out of the uh, greater confinement. That's what the code calls it. We're already in confinement because the whole world is a prison camp for anybody who's classified as black. All right, the system of white supremacy has made that clear. So we're all born in prison, but we are put into what we call, what the code book calls, greater confinement when we do things that the white supremacists are not pleased with. So when they let us out of greater confinement, into the general confinement, which is the entire planet, anywhere we go, we're still confined and consigned to wherever the races tell us that we have to be and what we have to do while we are there. So if they let us out and out in order to do what? In the greater prison yard and We'll just see what the result's going to be. Now, millions of black people don't know anything except preying on other black people. So is that a constructive result? The answer is no. Black people running around killing each other, robbing each other, breaking, burglarizing, carjacking. The carjacking figures are up. Usually black people carjacking somebody's grandmother, car full of children, put the children out somewhere on the side of the road and keep going with the car because somebody somewhere has offered them a deal on a car, bring as many as two men as I pay your cash right away, and, you know, we'll repaint it and whatnot or change the plates or whatever. And the car disappears forever. Mm-hmm. So I'll get you to do this. So a lot of black people are doing that. If you're going to go back to doing that, is that a constructive result? According to the code, no. But can I make a judgment about it before they do it? No, I'm not going to do that. That's risky. I could make mm-hmm. an error. 
Mm-hmm. So since they are doing it, we'll see what the constructive results going to be. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. And let's go down into the 682 area where we have Jay. That would be Fort Worth. Jay, you're on with Mr. Fuller. You can be heard, and what is your question? Good morning, fellas. Good morning, sir. Mr. Bobby, I would like to stay on the line. Okay, sir. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fuller has a, a quote that he says every morning when he gets on the show, and it's called, and he says, I'm still learning. And so... I decided to uh, start me a library, and I'm very proud to say that the first three books in my library are the 1984 edition of the Code, the Word Guide, and the 2016 New Revised uh, Version. And so my question to you, Mr. Fuller, was um, with people of color, And I know it's true uh, that we have a uh, like an unforeseen type of way of knowing a lot about things, but the things that we know about are not constructive things. So why is it uh, that we focus on learning things that are are completely non-constructive in our lifetimes? Because we're trained that way. See, they have a, uh, the world for black people in the system of white supremacy is not only a concentration camp uh, in the sense of being a giant prison, but we are taught to concentrate our minds on doing things that produce non-constructive results. Because the white supremacists say, you got to keep black people doing stupid stuff, you know, and uh, get them to worship stupid stuff. And they have been successful in doing that. Black people love to be involved in anything that's stupid and anything that's serious and constructive. Black people will literally tell you, many, many millions of black people will say, oh, you're too serious. I mean, I can't, I can't be bothered with nothing that's serious. I mean, well, man, it just hurts my mind to even think about something that's halfway serious. But anything that's silly and stupid, I mean, we just tear down walls to get to it. We're trained to do that. We're not that way naturally. We weren't born that way. But after we were born, the white supremacists got everything set up where they reward black people. Do something stupid, Negro. And uh, I'll give you a little more bread, a little more cornbread, a little more watermelon, a little more money. I mean, it depends on what your persuasion is. A little more of this, a little more of that. Just like you train a dog. That's how you train dogs. You reward them for what they do. Mm-hmm. The dog doesn't know anything about what you're telling them. The dog just knows that when it goes and sits in the corner and is quiet, they get fed. But when they go out on the porch and do all that barking and attract all that attention and have people calling law enforcement and whatnot about the dog barking, then you train the dog to do something other than the dog does on his own is go out there and bark because that's what the bark wants, the dog wants to do. But you say now, you know, you stop that barking and go sit in the corner. That's when you get fed. That's when you get water. So little by little, that dog gets quieter because he said barking is not giving me the constructive results that I want. So it's the same thing they have done with black people, and they. You know, they got a complete ironclad situation for doing it. So it's easy to do. So we are highly trained to be non constructive people. We 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 enjoy everything that's gonna produce non constructive results. 
as far back as I can remember, black people look forward to going to the Saturday night dance because one thing you're going to guarantee, you're going to see two or three fights. And really, truth be told, we look forward to the fights. But then over the years, it wasn't just beer bottles and fist fights. It got to be gunfire. That's a different story altogether. So now that's yeah. what you have to this day. To this day, absolutely. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Fuller. Shout out on the chat room to Let's Get On Code. So-called black is in the house. Morpheus, thank you. And J.J. Keller from London, England, thank you for um, listening to today's show. Appreciate that very, very much. Let's see here, Mr. Fuller. Um, This comes from Divitude saying this. Hello, Mr. Fuller. Why do people believe black children understand racism better than adult white people? I keep hearing that black children are old enough to experience racism and that white people need to be educated about racism. That being true, if the average black parent is confused about racism and doesn't teach their black children about racism, then how does the black child know that what they experience from a white child is racism? If a white child calls a black child darky specifically, then how does that black child know that that white child was practicing racism? The black child has to be told anything, like all children have to be told anything that they learn, and we are all children. Black people, period, are children in the system of white supremacy. There's no such thing as black men and women in the entire system of white supremacy, nowhere on the planet. That's impossible. You have white men and white women. You have black males and black females in the recent categories of gendership. Uh, But anything black is childlike. Why? We are put in a childlike position. Doesn't make any difference how old you get. I'm pretty pretty well up there in numbers of years that have passed that I've been on the planet. But I have never qualified for manhood. It's impossible to be a black man in the system of white supremacy. It cannot be done. Doesn't make any difference how you twist and turn, how much you know, where you go, who you think you know. It's not going to happen. No black man has ever existed in the system of white supremacy. Your manhood was taken away when you became a prisoner of war, and you became a prisoner of war before you were born. So that just ain't so. Man means manager. All managers in the system of white supremacy are white, every last one of them. And a black person now, there are millions of black people who say, what are you talking about? Door manager. I got that title. Yeah, black people got a whole bunch of titles. We're title crazy, which is a part of the white supremacist scheme. They dump titles on us. We can get any kind of title we want. Kings, queens. Hey, how many titles do you want? <laughs> Line up. I got a warehouse full of titles. But you will be subordinate to me. When I come around, you are nothing. Yep. Yep, that's the way it seems like it is. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Fuller. Let's go to the 815 area code, and uh, I think we have Justice. Justice, you are now on with Mr. Fuller, and you can be heard. What is your question? Uh, I just uh, I wanted Mr. Fuller to elaborate on the whole prisoner of war thing, because that, that confuses a lot of black people, and it always makes they always say, why are you being so negative when you bring that up? They say you're being negative or you're being, That's you're, a valid you're not question. being positive. 
Why am I being negative? So my question would be to anybody who asked me that, why am I being negative? First thing I would deal with is the word negative. Because when somebody says something about you, first thing you want to know is not who's saying it. You want to know is it true. But in order to find out whether it's true, you got to find out what the words mean that they're, t- that they're using you. as you. So I've had people say to me, uh, Mr. Puller, you're so, so negative. Well, see, I hold it right there. I say, what do you mean by negative? What do you mean by negative? And we can't go no further until we get that straight about what do you mean by negative. So, for example, like being asked now, I would have to ask the person who says that, uh, or I'll even ask the caller right now. What did the person mean when they said I was negative and not positive? What does negative mean and what does positive mean? Because all I'm saying is, did I tell the truth or did I lie? Did I make a recommendation that's constructive or did I make one that is non-constructive? Because there ain't no such thing as in between. Well, most people, when you tell them that we are prisoners of war, they they get depressed or they get they 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 don't. Oh, hold it, hold it right, hold it right there, hold it, hold it right there. Now we get this is how the code works. Oh, when I tell the truth, you get depressed. Now, what does that mean? They, See, everything has feel- meaning. In other words, yeah. I tell a person the truth. I ask, is that what I said? Was it true or false? And they say, yes, yeah, true. But when you say it, it, I get depressed. Okay. What does that mean? Does yes, that mean I'm not bad. supposed to tell? Does that? Oh, and does that mean I'm supposed to lie to you? That's what you want me to do. Would that make you feel better? That's the that's the question. All problems are solved through the process of questions and answers. And there's all kinds of questions and answers once you start talking about this type of thing called race. I mean, that's how you get really get through it. And I'm asking some of these questions right now. And one of the questions is, oh, now I just told you the truth. You said the truth made you feel bad. Well, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to lie to you? And will that solve a problem? I might have three dozen questions right there. Three dozen. Will that solve? Do you want me to lie to you? Will that solve your problem if I lie to you? How many lies do you want me to tell to you in order for you to feel good about being lied to? See, that, 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 that's how that's supposed to work. That's how that conversation is supposed to go. Stay in that question lane. Questions and answers will always take everybody, not where they want to be, but they'll take everybody where they should be. That is what codification is about. In answer to your question, how how do you respond to people like that? Oh, that's a gold mine. That's how you really get something done. Just go into the question mode. Did I tell the truth? Yeah, you told me the truth, but it makes me feel bad. Okay, what do you want me to do to make you feel good? You want me to lie to you? Yes or no? How many lies do you want me to tell you from now on to make you, quote, unquote, feel good? See, now, every, you know, I'm in the age bracket where I go to the doctor. I'm going to give that as an example. Now, I'm the type of person, of course, you know, it depends on the type of person you are. Some people want to be lied to, okay? And if they want to be lied to, tell people that. But when I go to the doctor, I say, give me, give it to me straight dose. What is my condition? And if that doctor says, you got terminal cancer, and it ain't nothing we can do about it, that's exactly what I want to hear. 
if that's the truth. And if he's telling a lie, that's you know that's that's definitely something that I mm-hmm. don't want to hear. But the code is about first of all, you got to be willing to face the truth. Yeah, yes, I understand. There's all kind of examples of that in history. I mean, uh, this Colonel Savage in the movie Twelve O'clock High with Gregory Peck. There's two of those movies out. I got the Gregory Peck one on my movie list. There's another 12 o'clock high movie out. Uh, I don't recommend that one at all. I recommend the one where Gregory Peck is the main character in Colonel Savage. And he told his audience this. He told the men this. He said, I'm going to tell you the truth. He said, you're going to have to get up there and fly every day in broad daylight over German territory. And a lot of you are not coming back. I'm going to tell you that right now. And we're just not going to go and We've got to keep going. We're not going to get any help. We're not going to get any reinforcements. So you forget about going home. Consider yourselves already dead. Mm. Okay. Wow. In the other uh, 12 o'clock high, was that the one with Robert Stack in it? No. Okay. Gregory Peck. Gregory Peck, okay. Yes, where they have actual footage of aerial combat and whatnot. It's a very realistic movie. Okay. Uh, I like I like things that are realistic. Yes, and, sir. Uh, that's why I don't like a whole lot of movies they make about black people. They're not realistic at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they tweak it, try to tweak it here and tweak it there, and you know, and and lean in the things. I call it leaning in the things, rather than just be up front. Okay. The black people have all kinds of faults, you know, and even in discussions. I was thinking about this this morning before I came on air. Uh, we want to hide. We want to. We want to. You know, because of what the previous caller said. We want to feel good. But see, when you got a nail in your shoe and it keeps working against your foot. And the health of your foot, it doesn't feel good. But you keep telling yourself, I ain't got a nail in my shoe. And it keeps getting worse. But you keep telling yourself, I ain't got no nail in my shoe. So then you decide that you're going to drink some alcohol to hide the pain that you have that's coming from the nail in your shoe. And for a while, it will. But the nail is still there. So you've got to get that nail out. Black people have a serious problem trying to face the truth. We're in bad shape. But see, the first step toward getting in good shape when you're in bad shape is anybody can tell you that goes to a gym. You are admitting what? I'm in bad shape. When you walk in there, that's what you're saying. I'm in bad shape. That's why I'm here, to get in good shape. That's a great analogy. Great analogy. Nail in the shoe. Wow. Wow, that's a, that's great. Oh, man. Um, this comes from Miss Anonymous, Mr. Fuller, says this. Mr. Fuller. Why is it hard for a black person that had that has went to college to find a job in their field that they uh, had major for, that they got a major in? Why is it hard for a black person that had went to college to find a job in their field that they had major for, that they had majored in? Well. Uh... They, they always got a prescription for black people, a code for black people. That's what the white code is about, having the white supremacist code is about. And that's having the code for black people that they invented for black people. And what they're going to do is say, well, we can, we don't have to put this Negro in jail right now. We're going to put him in jail later. So we're going to give him a little time in a college. 
And at some point, you know, when the kind of his grandmother's sick and she's running out of money and all like that, I mean, he might have to drop out. Or if he makes it all the way through there, God bless him if he does. We got something for him when he gets out. And that is, we're going to give him the runaround. We gave him the runaround by sending him to that school in the first place. Now, I'm not speaking against college, what they call higher education, which the code says should be eliminated. This whole thing about elementary school, high school, college, that should be eliminated altogether according to the code. And we should speak in behalf of that being eliminated. There's no such thing as college. There's no such thing as elementary school. There's no such thing as high school. High school, H-I-G-H, high, meaning, okay, so you've got high school and you've got elementary school, which is might you might call in uh, another language, low school, got low school, then high school, Wait a minute, why chop up education like that? First thing you do is look at what needs to be done out here in the world. And everything that you teach in any school should be tailor-made for doing all of the things that need to be done. And you do that in record time without putting all these fancy categories, which don't make sense at all high school, college, higher education. Education is education. You're either educated or you're not. Hmm. No such thing as no higher education or lower education. You either know what needs to be done or you don't. And you so, may... Yes, sir, go ahead. Yeah, you may have answered her her second question, which was also, do you think that going to college is unnecessary? It depends on what they teach. It depends on what you learn and what you can apply. Always think about that. See, most black people come out of that any school clutching that paper. And I know how I felt when I did mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm out of high school. And all of a sudden, I felt a cold chill that I knew I was going to feel. I'm out of high school. I'm supposed to be running down the street turning flips with the future that I see for me. But I wasn't doing that. I felt like I'm in trouble. I can no longer hide in that high school. Hmm. Why? Because they told me I have graduated. But with my black skin, what does that mean in this town where I'm in? Wow. And I looked around at just that town, and I said, "I have grad- I, you told me I have graduated and that I am now ready all that Caps going up in the air and all like that and hugging and whatnot and walking across and getting this piece of paper in my hand with all that fancy writing on it. And I walked out of that place and the crowd is dispersed and I felt what? Alone. (coughs) Why did I feel that? Just like the call is asking about is because I knew that I was. I'm mm. alone. I'm alone on the North Pole, surrounded by nothing but whiteness, mm. bleakness. I don't know uh, what, what which way is anywhere. I don't. It's nothing nowhere. And that's mm. what I'm looking at. I can't hide no more. Coming to school with these books. I mean, thinking about that grand future I'll have when I get away from this place. Wow. All right, you got to leave it there because we're going to say this. You are listening to the Counter Racist Code Show with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I am your co-host, Mr. Bobby. 
To get in contact with the show, simply dial 516-453-9921. Press the number one button if you have a question. And um, we'll make every attempt to make sure you get in and make sure you give the call screen your name so that I can identify you. You can also Gmail me at the numeral 7, Mr. Bobby, B-O-B-B-Y at gmail.com. And um, it'll be placed in a in rotation also. And it will be read and I will give you the date and time that it will be read unless it's eliminated, which it could very well be. I have no control over that. But anyway, that's what you do if you want to get in contact with the show. So let's get on with the next 29 minutes. Uh, let's see here. This person did not... Whoa. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. Let me see here. Let's go to this. Let's go to the 202, the district. See if, um, don't have a name here, but good morning. You're on with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Did you have a question? Because I don't see your name up here. No, you must be just listening. Okay, that... That's 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 fine too. You can you can just listen. Uh Jay, you're still on from Fort Worth. Let me check make sure uh woo ooh. Let's see, wait a minute. Uh technology. Jay, did you have a question or did you are you just still holding as you requested? Yes, I was I was just trying to ask Mr. Fuller. I know he has a movie list. And I was trying to ask Mr. Fuller, is it a couple of books that he likes to read? And could he recommend um, some books that people of color should look into? Okay. Is this for your library, uh, Jay, that you had spoken about? Say it again, sir. Is this for your library? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Fuller, um, did you hear Jay's question? I heard his question. Okay. Uh What I would recommend... Here in 2021, uh, I've read, 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 read many, 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 many books, periodicals, newspapers, all down through the years, so many that I I wouldn't even venture to to name any. Uh, Just pick books, I would say, in the year 2021 that tells you what to do about stuff. More than anything, that's what black people need more than anything. Books to tell you how to get things done. That's the best way to go. Because everything moves fast now. A lot faster than when I was coming up, say, at age 19, 20. Uh, So since everything moves so fast, you got to move fast. The way everything is going. So that means there's a lot of catching up to do. You're running behind all the time as it is. So you might just have to jump over a whole bunch of stuff uh, and not plow through it. A lot of people are, you know, just you're burdened down with a whole bunch of stuff that just slows you down. So go to the books that tells you, find out the things that need to be done. And then if you go to a library, and you're going to pick out books. Pick out books that tell you how to do the things that everybody says need doing. How to do things. How to do things. That's something that people catch on to real quick, who are what you might call backward and primitive people. They sometimes surpass people, people who come from uh, you might call the hinterland or, or come from places that are kind of rural, or backward, right away they got to hit the ground running. So you you would ask them, well, what type of books you're going to read now that you're being exposed to a whole big world that you got to catch on to? You got to learn. You 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 don't even speak the language, and you're dropped off here. So right away, people like that who are desperate, they go for find out what people are doing that is working and then get some books that tell you how to do it and then do it. Hmm. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. 
And, and sometimes it amazes people sometimes how people can come from distant places and come where they are, where nothing is happening, and those people make things happen. It's because everything is fresh to them. Mm-hmm. They haven't gotten stale. So they look and see what works and what doesn't right away. Right away. Okay. So, yeah, if I, if I do this and I do that, it seems like I get something. So the first thing they notice are people who are doing things that work and seem to be getting uh, what you might call progress from it. So mm-hmm. they immediately start copying that. Mm-hmm. But okay. when you're around when, when you're around that type of thing so long, you don't notice it. That's where the difference comes. Okay. There you go, Jay. There you go. Purdue's 21 says this, what we have now is introduction into white supremacy for victims, another for racists, all in one classroom. He was speaking about classrooms. Okay, let's go to the 770 area. Let's see if I can get you in here. Okay, don't have your name here, but did you have a question for Mr. Fuller? Okay, once, twice, no. How about the 929? Let me see if I can get you in here. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, I'm going to get you just a second here. Okay, in the 929, don't, don't have your name in here, but do you have a question for Mr. Fuller? You don't have a question, okay. All righty, there we go. Let's do this. Swa, let me get you in here. Ain't that it? Okay, Swa, there we go. Okay, good morning, Swa. How are you this morning? And what is your question for Mr. Fuller? Good morning, Swa. Okay. Unless we're having technical difficulties, I don't think so. I think it might be my my uh, must Can be me. Oh, okay, there you go. Okay. I don't know what happened on there. Okay, go ahead. Good morning, Swa. What is your question for Mr. Fuller? Um greetings, um, Mr. Bobby, greetings, Mr. Fuller. Um Mr. Fuller, is is this a constructive suggestion to um so called um black gay bangers or black people and victims of racism who spend their time and energy um shooting each other? Would it be more constructive for them to um, stop killing each other and shooting each other or to go out and um, attempt to shoot suspected racists or uh, white supremacists? Uh, I, I, I know I don't. I, I didn't understand that question. Repeat it again. Yeah, I'll try again. Uh, is it a constructive suggestion for um, if black people want to shoot each other or shoot people, should they um, stop killing each other and go out and uh, attempt to shoot suspected racists or white supremacists or just stop killing in general? What was the best suggestion? Stop killing in general. Yes, absolutely. Stop killing in general. And if you kill somebody... If you kill somebody, stand by your work. When I look on television and I see somebody shooting, they'll show where the cameras that that sweep the streets and whatnot. Uh, I'll see somebody that looks like they're black. I mean, sometimes they got hoods on and all that, you can't tell. But, you know, and they got their sneakers. And uh, the camera will pick them up and say that these are the pictures of the suspects and they'll jump out of a car and shoot. Now here's the part that the code says is an absolute no-no. They jump in the car after they shoot and run. Now the code says, oh no, 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 no. Stand by your work. Why? Because what you're doing is I'm killing somebody or trying to kill somebody I don't want nobody to know that I did 
which means I already know that they're going to be looking at almost anybody, and I hope they get anybody but me. That's what you're doing. So don't say you care anything about black people if you do that kind of stuff. The code calls to stand by your work. You kill anybody, you should say, you better believe I did it. Not only that, I'm going to do some more of it if I can. And anybody that don't like it, I'm the baddest thing on the block. Come after me. Now, the average black person who does that or who even hears me talking that way will say, yeah, uh, I, I, I do stuff, but I ain't no fool. Okay? Well, the code says nobody should protect you because the code says stand by your work. If Neely Fuller does anything, if I go out there and kill somebody right now, you better believe they're not going to be looking for nobody else. They're going to be looking for me because I'm going to make it known who did it because I have a reason for doing it. And that reason is going to be valid. That's it. And there's no exceptions to that. When anybody kills anybody anywhere on the planet, everybody on the planet should know two things immediately. Who did it and why? And this is a part of the black code. This is a part of the counter-racist compensatory code. This is a part of what's in my book. There's no exceptions to that rule, whether it's in a war or whatever you want to call it, or a gang war or beef or robbery or a so-called domestic dispute. Anytime anybody, doesn't make any difference who it is, here in the year 2021, kills anybody. For whatever reason, everybody on the planet should know instantly two things. Who did it and why? Mm. No exceptions. No exceptions. Okay. Let's go to the 858. Uh, I don't have your name here, but good morning. You're on with Mr. Fuller. What is your question? Morning, Mr. Fuller. And Mr. Bobby, this is Estelle Mojave Disney. I'm calling. Good morning. Um, morning. Mr. Fuller, there's a lot of commentary and discussion about the incorrect behavior of black people and the ease, as you mentioned, with which the white supremacists had manipulated and continue to control black people. Of course, I rarely, uh, if ever, no other non-white people are ever mentioned. I never hear us ever say, you know, the Asians, they could be trained like dogs or the Middle Eastern or people, they're no good jumping out of cars, or the Hispanics. So my question to Mr. Fuller would be personally, since your phenotype, Mr. Fuller, is not visually the appearance of a black person, have you ever had the desire to pass for another non-white person so that you could have had a little bit better life and be closer to white people and on the winning team? Uh, here again, now it's my fault. I'm missing that question. Okay, the question is, would you, because you're not so dark and visually a black, black-looking black person, would you have preferred to pretend like you're Hispanic, Middle Eastern or something, so you could have gotten better privileges being on this earth? No, but the people who do that, they, that's their choice. It's no, a lot not, of black people who pass for white. That's what I'm saying. Do you prefer, would you have preferred, and if not, why not? Why not have it easy for yourself? Well, that's for, that's an individual's choice, but, you know, I, I, I wouldn't choose to go that route. I don't think, I don't have no light skin where I could pass for white. So no, I, said I another couldn't get group. away with you that. Said you could have said you're Middle Eastern or Hispanic, since they don't seem to ever be the topic of discussion. I notice no one ever talks about the worst behaviors 
of any of these other groups ever. I don't hear nobody talking about, and I'm out here watching the Asian community, how they behave and interact, the Middle Easterners, the Hispanics, Mexican, Colombians, Nicaraguans. I never, ever on any of these shows, and if we're under the classification of non-white people, I'm just wondering why just the focus always on how how rotten and the behavior is about black people, yet I'm watching with my very eyes and experience these other non-white people are doing some pretty rotten stuff too. Oh, well, the way the code looks at that is all people, all white people, all non-white people are nowhere near the quality of people that people ought to be. There's no such thing as examples. Even the people who are used as examples, okay, according to the code, should not be used as examples. The examples are yet to be produced. That's right. the code position. So, but the so in the meantime, model minority. Hello, say that again. Hello, I said the Asians have constantly been called to black people the model minorities. Has anyone By not whom? heard? By See, the, the white question is, by whom? By the white supremacists. Well, the white supremacists can do as they please. So that should be the an answer to your question. The white supremacists can pick anybody in their prison camp. That's why I tell people, look at movies like Shawshank Redemption, look at any movies about prison, but particularly that one. And the warden of a prison can walk through the prison and say, these are going to be my favorites, and I'm going to put them in a special category. I'm going to give Brooks Haddon maybe a job in the library because he's worn out anyway, and I'm going to pick this one and pick that one, or even in the death camps, like yeah. you see the movies about the Nazis in World War II. They pick certain people to work in the factories, like in the movie Schindler's List, and... They let Oscar Schindler, a German, pick who he wanted to, and he's a member of the Nazi Party. And he said, well, I need some workers, so it's some of them who are not going to die today. Mm. Now, the ones that are going to die today, they resented that. But, I mean, who are they going to get mad at? Well, the people who run the prison. You're going to be mad at somebody. You know, you don't sit, look around and and say, you know, that. Well, I mean, they treated this prisoner or or royal, and they're not treating me as royal. Well, you you take that up with the prison master. You cannot take it up with the fellow prisoner, the fellow prisoner who receives all of these gifts and whatnot and all like that. More power to him. Okay. More power That's the way that works. Yeah, you, know, you, okay. you don't even you don't even you don't even compare yourself with them if you want a no, flat no. answer. You don't compare. Okay. You don't compare no, under no is, circumstance. You don't was, compare. It was just hello? asking you Hello, Mr. Fuller. I got the message and I'm glad you used those movies. I do understand the themes and messages in those. I just wanted to know if personally you wanted to be one of those that was considered the model person. But thank you. You've answered. I appreciate it. Thank you, Estelle, and uh, don't be a stranger. Uh, let me get this in here. Um, Marcus, go ahead. Uh, wait a minute. Go ahead, Marcus. Uh, okay. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on this program, I remember um, one of the questions was about the 1619 Project. And... Um, now, a lot of the schools, and it's been a big debate across the nation that people don't want, you know, to learn about the 1619 Project in the schools. But the, the state of Texas has actually um, implemented the 1836 Project, which is, I think, is um, the Battle of the Alamo and how, you know, the, Texas won their independence against, the uh, you know, the, the nation of Mexico during that time. So my question is, could if you could explain why the white supremacists will want the 1836 project to be learned about in the schools rather than the 1619 project, because I have my own reasons, but I just wanted to see what Mr. Fuller would, would say about that. 
the code says, just tell the truth. Okay, what kind of project you got? And when I say the truth, I mean, just tell it all. Tell everything that happened and why it happened, who was involved, they did. But the cold position is the truth about racism has never been written. All of the things that have happened have never been written. They are not recorded. And there's no way for it to be written. But you do the best you can. But just tell the truth. That's all. You can put any kind of label on it you want to. But when you start talking about events, why they happened, who did what, for what reason, who, when, why, what, where, and how, that's what you want in everything. Just reveal the truth. Tell it all. If you don't tell it all, and just tell part of it, you don't have the truth. So you're either going to tell the truth or you're not. Now, it doesn't make any difference whether you call it the 16, 19, or whatever. Texas, Missouri, New York, Egypt. Just tell the truth about everything. And really, that's extremely difficult to do. Yes. Because... Most of recorded history has never been told. The recorded history didn't tell history. Most of history has never been recorded. Mm-hmm. But Already. you do the best you can. But tell yes. it all. Yes. yes. Uh, let's get this last call in here very right quick. Uh, you see either Ike or Ikey in Galveston. Uh, go ahead. You're on with Mr. Fuller quickly. All right. Uh, yes. Yeah, so good morning. I um, just wanted to to get Mr. Fuller's opinion on, um, and I, I think I know it, but I'd want to get a refresher here. I'm actually from from Galveston, and I, I don't know if you're familiar with with Juneteenth and, and that whole celebration, which is coming up here uh, Saturday. Um, and I've heard Mr. Fuller talk about, uh, you know, not really, you know, black people shouldn't celebrate anything. So. Um, I want to just kind of get Mr. Fuller's take on on, on Juneteenth. Okay, Mr. Fuller? If if he's familiar with it. The code says that no black person on the planet or in the known universe is qualified to celebrate anything, correctly qualified to celebrate anything. So... Under the compensatory code, compensatory means making up for what's missing. What do you do uh, in the instance, say, of June 10th? Don't have a celebration. Have education. Balloons and hot dogs and all that stuff, that's got nothing to do with it. Uh, You're going to have something to eat because people do get hungry. Then have some healthy food. And you talk about what the event is about and whether or not it's going to produce a constructive effect. But if you're talking about progress, you never do it within that envelope. You never call it progress. You don't, you don't list anything that black people have achieved in the system of white supremacy as progress, ever. You always point it out as something that you did and try to build on that something, whatever it is. But you don't put it under the, you don't even speak of it in, uh, in the terms of something to celebrate. A whole lot of jubilee type thing, hallelujah type thing. No. That's in the far, far future, the way that everything is set up now. 
so that when you do have a celebration, it is a celebration. And really, I'm saying when the system of white supremacy is done away with and replaced with justice, it doesn't call for a celebration then. It calls for a sigh of relief. And then you move on to producing the next phase, which is universal man, universal woman. Anything short of that should be considered silly. There's a lot of silliness. That's all. But it should come under the title, not of celebration ever. Black people don't celebrate. That should be known all over the world. Black people don't celebrate nothing. They used to celebrate everything. They don't celebrate nothing. They ain't in condition to celebrate nothing. But they do believe in education, meaning learning how to do what? Solve problems. So that Juneteenth should be about how to solve problems. Everybody connected with it should be about how to solve some type of problem. Okay. Got to leave it there, Mr. Fuller, but what I wanted to do in the next two minutes, that's all we have left in the show a little bit, is to speak about your book. That's really important. Yes, sir. Go to ProduceJustice.com. ProduceJustice.com. And what will come up on the screen is a textbook for victims of white supremacy and a word guide. These are the books, because people in this program this morning have asked about books. These are the books that I recommend that every black person, every non-white person should have. I wrote them, but not just because I wrote them. It's because I think this is the way to go. We need a code. We need to all be thinking about writing something. What is a code? Some writing something or coming up with little formulas each and every day you should be thinking about and writing code yourself. Now, what is code? How to get something done in the best possible manner that will produce the most constructive result. What to do and what to say each and every day. Addressed to the individual person, because you're not two and three people, you're just one person. So what do you do as one person? You become a government of one, and you do that with a code. Go to ProduceJustice.com. That's ProduceJustice.com, and that will give you some guidance, hopefully, about how to proceed. But I also recommend that everybody purchase the book going to producejustice.com and when you go into a classroom or go to a meeting carry the basic book with you preferably the revised expanded edition 2016 edition and if you want to the word guide in addition to it so you know how to use words at a meeting know what questions to ask what questions you know in a, in a history class or Any type of class, sociology, all those type of classes, economics, then, you know, questions that you can raise, students particularly, but at any meetings where you're supposed to be solving problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we have justice.com. ProduceJustice.com. Okay, we've come to the end of the program. Thank you all for uh, for listening. Thank you for your questions. Uh, pardon me for the mistakes that I have made. I'm always going to make mistakes, but guess what? I'm still learning. But remember all the things that have been said today, something in particular that may stick out in your mind. And, of course, we will try to do better next week. Don't forget what he said earlier, this thing, uh, earlier in the conversation about the nail in the shoe. Yeah, i got to write about that today. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Thank you all for calling. Thank you all for your Gmails, for the chat room. Thank you all, and we will see you next week trying to do better, still learning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.